to endure these things. Physically snakes. We have to endure spiritual snakes. Because He seeks to take every one of our lives on this journey. Are you willing to endure that? Are you willing to endure all these things? Because it says, Proverbs 8, 17, I love them who love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Matthew 7, 7 says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Hebrews 11, 6, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must first believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Will we seek him anyway? Will we endure these things to seek the glory of God? Is what, is, that's the whole question right now. Because you're going to have many, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, that's going to fall away from the faith. They're going to give heed to these serpent doctrines. They're going to give heed to these scorpions get aggravated with the people in the church. How many of you know that some of them got aggravated with people in the church and left the church? <laughs> Man, that's everywhere. That happens in almost every church. They get mad with somebody in the pew. Can't handle it? Or maybe it's justified. Maybe somebody actually did say a, a crazy word to them and did put a scorpion sting on. But guess what? If you love Jesus, if you love Him and you've got a passion like these wise men and you're called the wise virgins, amen, Matthew chapter 25, then you will just let that slide and go on off of you. Yep. Like a water off a duck's back. Mm -hmm. It'll flow off of you and you'll keep your eyes on Jesus and you'll continue to seek Him. Because mm -hmm. you love Him. You don't love the praise of people. You don't care what people even think about you anymore. You care what your Savior thinks about you. Amen? Amen. And that's what these that's why they're called wives. They didn't let none of these difficulties, these uncomforts, sometimes we gotta come out of our comfort zone. They came out of their comfort zone of being wherever they was, and they had money, they had riches, they could have stayed in there, said, Well, I've seen that star, man. One day we're gonna meet Jesus. You know, one day. No, they came out of the comfort zone and said, you know what, I'm coming out of this comfort zone. We're going to cross this desert and we're going to go see Him now. That's what I'm talking about. That's what Christians ought to do. Sometimes we've got to move out of our comfort zone and go do the things that nobody else wants to do. Nobody else wants to do. Like, like, like sometimes we go to the hospital or you go to the nursing home or you go to a prison or you even go to the street, the homeless. And the smells may be awful. And that they may be alcoholics. They may be smoking dope. And even if you try to reach them with the gospel, you come out of your comfort zone. Our comfort zone is coming to church many times and being around those <coughs> of like-minded faith. Mm -hmm. But when we come out of our comfort zone, a lot of times it's for those people that we're really uncomfortable around. They got the porcupine sins. Y'all know that, 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 that parable I told y'all about? Mm. The porcupine sins on the outside. You see, they got all them needles on the outside. You can't get near them, but they'll throw them at you, too. They'll poke you, and they'll shoot them at you. And you're like, good grief. You get around somebody smoking dope, shooting dope, smoking cigarettes, whatever, and they just, oh, oh, get out of here. Because they're a porcupine sin. They got the porcupine, but their son got the skunk. But our comfort zone's around the skunk. We really are. Well, they look pretty. They're all dressed up in shirts, got the tie on. Ooh, got a pretty white racing stripe. <laughs> Sit in the pew. How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you doing? And we just love it. We get along real good. But their skunk sins on the inside. It's spiritual sin, pride, bitterness, unforgiveness, evil inside. But we're comfortable around here, but we're not comfortable around those with the porcupine sin because they get on our nerves. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Isn't that strange? But we've got to have to come out of our comfort zone and start reaching those people that nobody else wants to be around. Amen. You know I mean? They come out of their comfort zone. They couldn't stay where they was. We're doing pretty good. God has watched over our families. He, he, he has supplied all of our needs. Mm -hmm. He has given us increase. And the reason why He's done this, and He's done, he not for us to become complacent and lethargic or apathetic, it's for us to make the journey. Make the journey to someone else to be saved. That's what it's for. Make the journey for the glory of the Lord to be revealed. The glory of the Lord can be revealed in someone's life when you speak the word. You give the word comes out of your mouth, plants a seed in their heart, and God does the watering, gives the increase, and it comes to fruition. And that's the glory of the Lord. Because somebody else is saved. Because we chose to come out of our homes. We chose to come out of our churches on Sunday morning. We chose to come on out 
after church and start spreading the gospel and giving the joy of the Lord. Amen. We chose to do that. They chose to endure these things. My goodness, I got to going on. <laughs> There's prophecies that say in Isaiah 63, it says, And the Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to your brightness, the brightness of your rising. This right here shows you prophecy of the wise men. These were pagan Gentiles, but they were coming to the light of Christ. And that's going to happen again in our day. It's going to happen again because we're going to shine brighter than the stars in the firmament. Daniel chapter 12. And there's going to be pagan, there's going to be unbelievers, there's going to be people from Islam, Buddha, and everywhere. They're going to come to know Jesus through the church. Amen. They're going to come to the brightness of your rising if you'll let yourself shine. We are the salt and the light. If we will let Him shine through us, amen. So men will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven, Jesus said. Let that menorah be all lit up. You remember about a month ago we went over the menorah and there's some flickering and some are just out? I felt that way lately. I'm like, Lord, you like them other candles in me, please. I think I got two going. There's supposed to be seven on the menorah. I've only got two flickering and one of them about to go out. And I think the love went out, Lord. Fight the love again if I hit somebody. Please. Been there, huh? <laughs> I'm serious. After that teaching, it goes in my mind now that that manure is not all quite lit up like it's supposed to be. There may be wisdom coming forth, understanding. There may be a reverence of the Lord, fear of the Lord. There may be all those things, but do we have love? Oh my goodness, without that, we're just a clanging cymbal and sounding brass. As it says in 1 Corinthians 13. But will we endure these things? But continue to read on. It says, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. I want you to listen to this. They had to hear about it. Now the star, that bright comet that had a tail on it that was going by, that is also evidenced in historical text, even in China, at this time, for real. Even in China, they, they got it on record that this thing came by, that this comet came by, and it stayed there a long time. You know, a comet can stay up there a while. And have that tail behind? That's exactly what we're singing about when we talk about that kite has a tail. You know, a song. <laughs> anyway, Herod didn't see it. It's right above them because Bethlehem's right outside of Jerusalem. He's like, well, I'm trouble. <laughs> He's a leader of God's people. Isn't it amazing how the leadership of the church even today cannot see the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Why? Because they're blinded by religion and self. Self and religion and self-righteousness blinds many to the glory of the Lord. I promise you that. Because you see, and not only that, he was troubled. That lets you know he didn't really want Jesus to arrive. He didn't want no Messiah to come. Do you know I have talked to people in their homes and told them, have you seen these signs about them? Have you seen the wars and rumors of wars? Have you seen that Israel became a nation in 1948? Have you seen all these prophecies fulfilled? And they'll get mad at you, claiming to be a Christian. Man, they show up all the time to their church. But they'll get angry with you. Oh, nobody knows the day of the hour. Quit talking about that. Because they don't want to leave this a material world. Aaron didn't want to leave what he had. He was troubled when he found out, uh-oh, the Messiah's here. Because he didn't really understand which part of the prophecy was about to be fulfilled. They had them mixed up back then. Back then, they thought that Jesus was about to come and, and destroy all the disobedient and raise them up on thrones over the Romans and over the Gentile nations. 